הכל עונה לבריטי, ריצ'רד קמפ פיקד בעברו על כוחות נאטו במלחמה באפגניסטן. הוא הגיע לכאן יומיים אחרי הטבח של ה-7 באוקטובר. מאז הוא כאן מסייר בזירות האש בדרום ובצפון ונפגש עם מפקדי צה"ל. הוא מצטרף אלינו עכשיו לרעיון מיוחד. קולונל ריצ'רד קמפ, הלו, תודה רבה שאתם מבינים. It's my pleasure to join you. So can you tell me a little bit about uh, the, what you've seen? Of, uh, from my understanding, you were taking on a tour around the Gaza envelope. Tell me a bit about what you've seen. I visited actually the, the northern border as well and, and the border around Gaza. And I've spoken to many extremely brave IDF soldiers preparing to defend Israel in the north and preparing to fight in the south. I've also visited some of the worst sites of the atrocities of 7th of October very soon after they happened, uh, particularly Kfar Aza and Starot. And some of the things I saw there, as well as the footage that I've watched of, that the IDF produced showing those atrocities are absolutely shocking. I've seen many horrific sites on battlefields around the world. Never have I seen something as devastating and horrific as the scenes that I saw there including the, the destruction of complete communities, the, the, the merciless killing, raping, torture and kidnap of innocent Israeli citizens. People, some people over here say Hamas is ISIS. My view is that Hamas is worse than ISIS, much worse. Mm -hmm. And when you see um, leaders around the world, some leaders who are calling for um, a ceasefire, um, calling to Israel to stop the, the operation or the war in Gaza. And when you see women organization, like the, like the UN women organization, complete, you know, keeping complete silence for two months about the atrocities that, um, that we've been through, about the raping of, of Israeli women, um, what's your take on it? Well, I think it's grossly irresponsible of um, world leaders, some of whom have been calling for Israel to cease attacking Hamas in Gaza. The world changed after the 7th of October as it changed after 9-11. And Hamas was recognized as the incredible threat it presents to Israel, and it has to be eliminated. And that can only be achieved by one of two things, and that is Israel destroying Hamas, or Hamas laying down its weapons, surrendering and handing over the hostages. I do see pressure by world leaders on Israel to stop attacking. I don't see pressure by world leaders on Hamas to lay down their weapons and surrender or get out of Gaza. And as for the United Nations, the UN for many years has been the enemy of Israel. The UN condemns Israel unjustly for war crimes every time Israel seeks to defend itself. The UN is a, is a disgraceful organization and it's complicit in Hamas's war crimes because Hamas seeks to get Israel vilified delegitimized, isolated around the world, and the United Nations repeatedly plays into that, which encourages Hamas, encourages Hamas to con commit further and further violence. That is the real cycle of violence in the Middle East. The UN, the world media in many cases, university campuses, and Hamas, all conspiring to, uh, to, to create this horrific violence, which Israel is then left having to deal with. And it's Israel, that is unjustly condemned for defending its own people. No other country in the world would be condemned or has been condemned in this way. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. And I, and I have to ask you, why do you think this double standard is? Is it purely anti-Semitism? Well, I can tell you exactly why it is. It's the result of a decades long propaganda campaign against Israel, which was started in the 1960s and has gained momentum around the world to condemn Israel, to make Israel illegitimate. And no matter what happens to Israel, and no matter what Israel does, Israel under this propaganda campaign is deemed to be in the wrong. I've heard people say, disgustingly say, that Israel had the 7th of October coming to it. And this is all a result of propaganda, which should be being countered, not just by Israel. Israel does a good job to try and counter it, as do the Jewish diaspora around the world. But responsible world leaders and world governments, such as my own in the UK, should be working much harder to counter this horrific, lying propaganda campaign that, again, it, 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 it encourages 
this terrible violence. And the violence is not only a problem for Israel, but Hamas's atrocities encourage and inspire jihadists everywhere around the world, including in my own country. If Hamas come out of this without being defeated, then we will see the repercussions in terms of terrorist attacks all around the world. Mm -hmm. So, so I, have to, I have to ask you, as a high-ranked British colonel, if you were the one to take actions on what the IDF is doing at the moment, fighting the terror organization, fighting Hamas, what would you suggest Israel to do? Well, the first thing I'd say is that the IDF don't need my advice. They're very capable, very competent military organization, admired by other professional soldiers around the world, including in Britain. But I would be doing exactly what the IDF is doing. Very careful, precise, but, but violent targeting of Hamas terrorists up to the point that they are destroyed as a threat to Israel. Uh, and, and there is no other alternative, even though a lot of people say, well, Israel should do it differently. Nobody that I've heard of or met or, or, or heard talking has got an alternative. Nobody suggests something different, which means really there isn't any different option. It has to be dealt with and that Hamas has to be smashed. And that might mean killing virtually all of the Hamas terrorists. It might mean forcing Hamas out of Gaza in the same way as the PLO were forced out of Lebanon in 1982. And it will certainly mean, in my view, the destruction of the Hamas leadership who reside overseas, which, which Israel was forced to do after the 1972 Olympics to Palestinian terrorists, and will have to do after this war is over to the, to the Hamas leadership. And it might take several years, but justice has to come their way. Yeah, and Israel needs to do it, not just for the safety of the Jewish people, but for the safety of, uh, of the West and the entire world, basically. Colin, uh, Richard, Kemp, I want to thank you so much for this interview and also for the fact that you came here to see with your own eyes and to spread this truth about what is really happening in Israel. I want to thank you so much for that. My pleasure, and I, I wish the IDF the best of luck in annihilating Hamas.